Hey you guys and welcome back to What's Still Undoing. It's a show about things that I've got going on in my life. Today we're going to be working on a television frame uh, that I've got put together and painted and ready for some antiquing that I'm going to put around our television within our entertainment stand. But before we get to that, I did kind of want to talk a little bit about where I've been. I haven't posted a video in about a month, which it feels a lot longer than that. But I had to take a month off to just really sit and reassess what I've got going on in this room. It's been a little overwhelming to say the least. I've mentioned before in the other videos that all of this is in preparation for my wife and I to find a place to live and, and stage all this. And when I started this project so many years ago, the idea that I had in mind was that we were gonna buy a house and I was gonna make the living room the most immersive thing you've seen in someone's home. And granted, people do this stuff all the time for like Airbnbs and they, they make these magnificent places and spaces for people to come and visit or to stay in and it feels like you're in the theme parks and if you haven't noticed yet i'm obsessed with the theme parks and when i say that the theme parks i'm talking about universal studios in orlando and disney world i'm i'm obsessed with them i want to be a part of them i want them to be a part of my life i'm constantly going to them i just i love them so much and I wanted to bring that home, you know, to our space so that I could feel like I'm constantly surrounded by it. The idea was that we would buy our own home, which would give me the ability to, you know, change light fixtures out and tear down walls and make the whole space themed. As time has, has progressed, we've kind of strayed away from that idea and we're looking more into renting a space, not because of our budget, but because we probably we probably don't want to stay within the area that we're at now. We want to go someplace that makes us happier. Because what happens when all of this is done, when I'm finished with this room? You know, are we just going to stay here and continue working the same jobs we have been? Which have been great. Don't get me wrong, we love our jobs. But it's not what we want to do for the rest of our lives. So we've been thinking about renting a place and what that means for this room, for this project. But one of the problems, not really problems, one of the challenges that I'm facing is that I have this room and with the idea in mind that we're going to be going to uh, like rent an apartment or a house somewhere, what I'm left with is a room full of themed cabinets. And each cabinet takes inspiration from a different shop within Diagon Alley. So the challenge that I'm facing is really how to take all of these individualized cabinets or individual shops and get them to come together in a way that looks cohesive that looks like its own wizarding shop that offers all of these things for sale as opposed to individual shops. Borgen and Burke sells creepy and Flourish and Blot sells books and Wiseacre sells wizarding equipment. Magical Menagerie sells animals. Um, I can go on and on and on. Each shop sh sells something specifically. So how do I get a shop of our own that sells all of those things but looks like it's supposed to sell all of those things instead of being a room full of individually themed cabinets. That's the biggest challenge I'm facing right now, and that's really what I was most overwhelmed with. So taking some time to figure out how that's going to work, how that's gonna to come together, and what it's gonna look like in the end um, has really helped me out a lot. I'm ready to get back to working on it because I feel like I'm in a state where like I figured it out, but uh, only time will tell. Only time will tell once I start getting all of this stuff done. It's such a process, you guys. There's so much more to do. And I'm just I'm just really happy I took the time off to kind of get it out of my head and kind of de-stress, decompress, and, and figure out how that's going to work. In the last video, I was spending a lot of time working on the uh, bookcase that I completed. It's 100% done. And at the end of that video, I had discussed how I was going to move to the apothecary cabinet next. However, with the month off that I had and sitting down and trying to think about what this was all going to look like in game, what I was going to work on next, what all of this was going to entail, yada, 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 I decided that wasn't the best move for me to go back to the, um, to go to the apothecary cabinet next. Instead, I've moved all of my focus towards our entertainment stand, and it's really, really based off of Wiseacre's wizarding equipment, which in, I think I've mentioned this briefly before, but... In Diagon Alley, Wiseacre's Wizarding Equipment is the gift shop at the exit of the Gringotts Ride, the Escape from Gringotts Ride. And when you look at uh, the shop within the theme park, it's slightly different from what you see on set in the movies. Harry doesn't go in that shop. Nobody goes in that shop. They don't show you the interior of that shop. So what you see at Diagon Alley is something that no one has seen before in the movies. They made it up. So really, I'm taking a lot of the inspiration from one photograph, which I'll show you here. And that is the set of... Wiseacre's wizarding equipment within the Harry Potter films. 
And obviously, since the television is going to be surrounded by all these brass antiques, like you see in this photograph, it has to match. It has to look like it belongs there. There aren't flat screen TVs in any of the shops in Diagon Alley, so I couldn't just put a TV on the wall and call it done. So, like I said before, today we're going to be working on a television frame. You know, people do this all the time. They put a, t a frame around their TV and it makes it look inconspicuous, like it's a piece of art in the room and not a television. So when you're not watching TV, it doubles as a piece of art. Now, something cool about this is that eventually, a lot further down the line, I'm going to turn the television into a moving portrait. So when we're not watching TV, it'll be like a photograph of my wife and I that will occasionally move or we'll walk in and out of frame or something like that. You know, lots of opportunities with that. Yeah, so that's where I'm at today. I've already got the cap, the cabinet. I've already got the television frame painted. It took quite a bit of painting and sanding which I have already done and you guys saw that at the beginning of this video. I'm not going to do a whole tutorial on how to spray paint. You guys know how to use spray paint. Uh, you know how to use sandpaper. So I did a lot of the prep work before this video and really today I'm just going to be finishing. And what I got <clears throat> was this stuff from Hobby Lobby. It was six dollars and this is called Rub and Buff. And the color that I got it in is antique gold. They offer this in, gosh, I think like eight or nine different color options. But what this is, is it's a wax, a finishing wax that has pigment added to it. All of the furniture that I've built for this room, I have built almost everything in here. And I painted it with chalk paint and I finish it with furniture wax. And all of that is finished in like a clear furniture wax. So this is the first time I'm using something that has pigment added to it. And I'm a little bit nervous because I have never used it before. I had to do a little bit of research, watch some YouTube videos on people who have used this in the past. So it's gonna be kind of an experimental thing for me, but I, I don't know, there's not really a way I can screw it up. And if I were to screw it up, I'd just, you know, a little bit more sandpaper, a little bit more spray paint, and then I'm back to square one. Uh, the color that it's spray painted right now is a uh, gold metallic, or no, it's a copper metallic finish. So it's a little bit like a rose gold color. Not super pink or red, but it's copper colored. So it has some pink and red tones to it. It's not just shiny brass gold color. So I think that the antique wax that is that shiny brass gold color on top of that copper is gonna look really, really cool. So that's what we're gonna do today. And then I'm also gonna show you guys how I have fix the frame to mount to the television. But um, yeah, let's get to work. Let's do some stuff. That's what you guys really want to see. All right, guys, so I've got everything laid out that I'm going to be using today, which includes the black rub out, the same rub out I used on the Death Eater mask, and the gold rub and buff. I also have a series of paint brushes, my handy dandy paint tray, and then of course, a um, piece of wood underneath the frame so I don't get paint all over the carpet in this room. Now, before I get started, I did kind of want to briefly talk about what went into constructing this frame. And basically, this is just some crown molding that I picked up from Home Depot. And then I cut it down on uh, a saw, some 45 degree angles, and assembled it to the exact dimensions of the television screen. After it was assembled, I did have to use some wood filler on the uh, seams so that you couldn't see a bunch of lines in the corners. Sanded that down, and then I spray painted the whole thing with a flat gray primer, let that dry, and then sanded it again. After you've spray painted it, the fibers of the wood start to show. It's almost like putting hairspray in your hair. Those little pieces of hair that are like thinner and kind of stick out like baby hairs that stick out from the rest of your hair are gonna be more noticeable when they have the hairspray on it. And that's kind of the same thing that happens with this bare wood is you start to get these like fuzzy pieces of wood fiber that stick up or stick out. So basically once I've primed it, uh, I went back and sanded it again with a finer grit sandpaper. For that process, I used 220 grit, I believe, and just got all those little fibers off and smoothed it out. You can do another coat of primer after you've sanded it, but that's optional. In this case, I didn't need to once I sanded the uh, fibers off and got everything nice and smooth to the touch. Um, I didn't need to do another coat of primer, so I just spray painted the whole thing with that copper colored paint and it ended up looking pretty good. It's very glossy and smooth and you really can't tell that it's wood. It, it feels and looks like a picture frame. So like I said, my next step is going to be the black rub out just to get in the crevices of the details on the frame and then go over the top of that with the gold rub and buff.
it's completely painted and waxed and it looks awesome but not this side this is the back of it I've got it face down on the floor right now because I did want to show you guys what I've done to mount it to the TV if you're planning on doing this at home I recommend googling it or like watching some YouTube videos to see how other people have done it and then just find a way that works best for you for me that entailed putting a piece of wood at the top and a piece of woven elastic band at the bottom. And what I did was I held the frame up to the television exactly in the place where I wanted it, and then I drew a line on the back of the frame, and that line was a guide for where I needed to put that piece of wood. So that piece of wood will rest directly on top of the TV, and then the elastic band will go behind the TV and hold the frame to the screen at the bottom. And it worked out perfect for me. It's, it, like I said, it's very simple. It's a very simple way of doing this, but it worked out great. So that is how I am going to mount this. I am now going to throw it on the TV and show you guys what it looks like completed. Alright you guys, this is what we are working with. The frame is done and it's on the TV and uh, I did go ahead and throw up a little witchy dance portrait that I found on Google on there. I'm not sure who owns this portrait but thank you for letting me use it. I do not own the rights to this painting. But it looks really really cool. In combination with all these really awesome trinkets that I have on the shelf, I ended up putting the uh, Ministry of Magic memo over there. It looks great. Got. Uh, the egg from Goblet of Fire there. And then in this little glass trinket box, I have the Sorcerer's Stone, which I bought from the parks and it came in like a glass dome cloche thing, but I, I'm gonna use that cloche somewhere else and I ended up just putting the stone in there. Eventually, this will be as full as the photo that I showed you guys earlier in the video of the, the exterior window of Wiseacres from the film, but that will be at a later date. So kind of picture it filled with a bunch of trinkets on all the shelves. And then also, there's a window on the door to Wiseacres in the studio sets, and they have magnifying glasses hanging. And I'm gonna hang magnifying glasses from that bar across the top, and I think that's really gonna tie the whole thing together. I was very excited for this cabinet. I just love the aesthetic of it, I love the colors on it. It's just so cool, it is so stinking cool. And the frame turned out great. The finish looks incredible. I did lose a lot of the copper tones from the spray paint, but I don't, I'm happy with it. I think it looks great. The black wash got into all the little crevices around the frame, and then you can really see with the dry brush of that gold rub, uh, rub and buff stuff did there all over it. It looks so good. It looks so good. But this is where I leave you. Pretty awesome, right? I think it looks absolutely phenomenal. I couldn't be happier with the way that the frame turned out. And who knows, maybe this inspires you to go home and put a frame around your TV. But as always, I appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. It really does help my channel out. And if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That way you can see episodes just like this on a semi-regular basis. But until then, guys, um, I'm Dylan, and this is what I've been doing. See ya.